So um, we are going to do some proofs today, but not every proof, all right? Because I know you'll be disappointed by that. But, you know, we, just, we don't have the time for it. I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm sorry. Okay. If you want to, like, stick around after school or something like that, I mean, I can show the proofs to you. You're good? Yeah. All right. That's fine. You want to come in early tomorrow morning. That's what it is. All right. All right. Yeah. Thirsty today, Chris, huh? Okay. So let's turn the page to uh, 448. Uh -huh. All right. And so, in fact, the conjectures that we made are properties of rectangles. Okay. If a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. Okay, so if we have a rectangle, then we know the diagonals are congruent, all right? Um, and we also have the property, if a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then it's a parallelogram, okay? So you can kind of think of as a rectangle as a specific kind of parallelogram. A parallelogram is like a more general kind of shape, and then more specifically, a rectangle fits kind of inside that, all right? We're going to prove, and I think this is the only... Uh, I think this is the only proof we're going to run through, I think. There's only like official proof we're going to run through today right here, I believe, okay? So it's kind of long, but that's because we're going to prove two things at once. We're going to start with ABCD being a rectangle, and they're going to prove ABCD is both a parallelogram and that the diagonals AC and DB are, in fact, the same length, okay? And you can see how we're, how we're going to kind of do it here. We're going to take ABCD, we're going to draw the diagonals in, and then we also kind of separate two triangles out of this rectangle, right? You can see triangle ADC, which is right here, and then also triangle BDC, which is right here. Okay, we're going to use those congruent triangles. We're going to prove the triangles are congruent, and then use CPCTC to help us with the rest. Okay, so let's go through this here. So ABCD is a rectangle. That's the given, so we don't have to you know, do anything there. Angle A and angle C are right angles. Definition of not right angles, rectangles. 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 We're told this is a rectangle, so it's just the definition of a rectangle. Okay? If something's a rectangle, it's got four 90 degree angles. Okay? Ooh. Okay? So um, angle A and angle C are congruent, and because all right angles are congruent, <laughs> yeah, I think it's going from bad to worse. There we go. <laughs> all right. So then um, angle B and angle D are right angles. How do you know that's true? Definition. Definition of rectangle again. I don't know why they just didn't do all that in one step, but they're doing it in two steps here. Okay. And so then angle B is congruent to angle D because all right angles are congruent. Yeah, all right angles are congruent. I mean, I guess you could potentially, no. I don't think transitive would quite work there. Okay. So you'll notice here A and C are opposite angles. D and B are opposite angles. And so then we say, therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram because what kind of properties guarantee that something is a parallelogram? If opposite sides are congruent? Aha, uh -huh, and that's what we just showed right here, right? Opposite angles are congruent. Right? So then um, we also have AD is congruent to BC because if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. All right, so we are using that property there. We're going to say DC is congruent to DC. So we said AD and CB are congruent here. We're saying DC is congruent to DC. Why do we know that? Reflexive. Reflexive. Of congruence. Oh, very, very official there. Nice. Yes, yes. Okay, you don't have to write that of congruence if you don't want to, though. All right, angle D and angle C are right angles. Definition of rectangle, right? Okay, so we have these angles are also then congruent because all right angles are congruent. And so what kind of triangle congruence do we have here? Side angle side, SAS. And we're going to name our triangles here. So we'll say triangle ADC is congruent to BCD. Very good. 
And then finally, 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 what were we trying to prove is congruent in the first place here? AC is congruent. We were, we were trying to prove that, but we did that right here. So we did the first part right there, but then the second part, AC is congruent to BD right there by CPCTC. So wow, 12 step proof. Okay, 12 step proof, but we made it through and you know, most of it makes sense, I think, right? It's just kind of time of congruence. All right. So now we have the fact that if we have a rectangle, then the shape is um, a parallelogram as well. And if we have a rectangle, then the diagonals are congruent. So go ahead and use those properties to help you answer number five. Okay? Maybe you want to label your picture there, but I want you to come up with a measure of DB. Come up with a measure of DB using the fact that if a shape is a rectangle, it's a parallelogram. And if a shape is a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. Okay? So use that to help you. Answer number five. You don't need to do six as well. Just number five is fine. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, how about we check those now when we get to start on the homework? All right. Just, I mean, I'll do it. No problem. But I just want to make sure. This that you. Okay, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds and I'll show the answer here. Good times. Okay, time's up. I don't have an answer. But it's 12.5. CM. OK. Questions on that? So you use the Pythagorean theorem here, right? We have right triangles inside of our rectangle there. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem to get AC if you wanted to. And then say then the diagonals are going to be congruent. So DB would be the same as length as AB. AC, I mean. I also saw some people, you, know, you could put a 10 and a 7.5 here because, again, a rectangle is also a parallelogram, so opposite sides will be congruent based off of that information. And so then you could use the leg leg here to get the DB there, or, or sorry, leg leg here to get the DB. Okay? So there's that. All right. That's rectangles. So, again, what makes a rectangle a rectangle? Well, first of all, if um, a rectangle is a parallelogram, which means it inherits all the properties of parallelograms, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, diagonals bisect. But then also with the rectangle, the diagonals, um, well, all the angles are right angles. That's the definition of rectangle. And then the diagonals are congruent in length. Now we're moving on to rhombus. Okay, a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. 
So another way of, just like we could say a rectangle was an equiangular quadrilateral, a rhombus then is a what? Equilateral, equilateral quadrilateral. Okay, so the rhombus is the equilateral quadrilateral. There's a picture. Alrighty. Um, what are the properties of a rhombus? Well, if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then it's a parallelogram. So that means the rhombus inherits all of the parallelogram's properties. Opposite angles are congruent. Opposite sides are congruent. Diagonals bisect each other. Additionally, a rhombus, its diagonals are perpendicular. That means they meet at a what kind of angle? Right angle. Right angle. And if it's a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects the opposite angle. So in other words here, in this diagram, you can see it maybe a little better than the way it's described. This diagonal JL bisects angle J and angle L in the rhombus. The diagonal MK bisects angle M and angle K in the rhombus, okay? So rhombus has, you know, two additional properties. Diagonals are perpendicular and the diagonals bisect, okay, the angles that they go through there. All righty. So we're not going to do the proof. We'll just skip through right through that, okay? We'll skip the your turn here as well. All right. And let's just turn the page to page 450, jump right into using some of these properties, okay? So here we are told rhombus, V, W, X, Y. Okay, our first task is to find X, Y, this length. Since this shape is a rhombus, X, Y is going to be equal to what other things? 6 on minus 12 and 4M plus 4. So that means 6M minus 12 and 4M plus 4 also have to be equal to one another. Okay, so we set them equal and then we'll solve. So 2m equals 16. So, oops, m equals 8. Plug it, in. plug it back in. Okay, I'm going to plug it into the 4m plus 4. So 4 times 8 plus 4. 4 times 8 is 32 plus 4 is 36. So wx is 36, and that means xy will be 36. And there's the answer the book gives right there. Okay. Next thing we're asked to find, YVW. Again, I'm not going to use the blanks and stuff. I don't like their blanks. YVW is this full angle right here. Okay. Do we know anything about the angle YVW? Yeah, the 9N plus 4, but is that the full angle? No, it's just this piece. But let's see here. If this piece is 9n plus 4, what does that mean this piece is going to be? Very good. Because if you remember, property of rhombuses, the diagonals in a rhombus bisect. So that means if that's 9n plus 4, this will be 9n plus 4. Okay? So we know then that YVW is going to equal twice 9n plus 4, right? Two times that amount. That amount. Well, the problem is, what is, what is n, right? How can we figure out what n is? So we can set them equal, but if we do 9n plus 4 equals 9n plus 4, we're going to run into a problem, aren't we? We're going to completely cancel out, and it's going to end up with 0 equals 0. Right? Subtract 9n from both sides, subtract 4 from both sides, you end up with just 0 equals 0. So we can't use them. We, I mean, if there was another situation, maybe, but in this case, it's not going to be helpful. So what else do we know? Yes, Del? Wait, is the arrow, or like, you know, the 3n squared minus... 0.75. Okay, so that's pointing to this angle right here. What do we know about this angle right here? Okay, it will be vertical to another one here. Yep. What else, though? Its vertical angle is the, interior, or the alternate interior angle of 9 and plus 4. Eh, we don't necessarily, I mean, I guess we do have some parallel lines here and here, but that's not what I'm thinking. It's, a little, it's, not, as, it's not as rough as that is, I think. Yeah? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular, right? That was the other property. So the diagonals are, um, well, the diagonals create these bias angle bisectors here. They are angle bisectors there, but they also meet at a right angle. So 3n squared minus 0.75 has to equal 90. <coughs> and so then we can add 0.75 over. We get 3n squared equals 90.75, divide both sides by 3, we get n squared equals 30.25, square root both sides, and n is, I think it was 5.5, if I remember correctly, from 
block two. Yes. Okay. And it's 5.5, which then we can plug in here. Like so, and type that into our calculator. Two times nine times five point five plus four. Okay, and we get one oh seven. Okay, so angle YVW is one hundred seven degrees. Okay, the full angle here YVW. Okay, question, James. What other angle in our rhombus is going to be 107 degrees? YXW. YXW, the opposite angle. Very good. Okay. Um, what about VYX? How can we find its measure? VYX. Okay. 180 minus 107. Right. They're going to be supplementary. If that's 107, this will be supplementary to that, so it'll be, and there's the question for it, 180 minus 107, which is going to be 73 degrees. Okay, what will the measure of angle XYZ, XYZ be? XYZ. So again, here is 73, half of 73, exactly right. So, 36.5, I think. Yes. Okay. So, again, just some ways you can use those properties to help you figure out other, you know, pieces of information and stuff like that. Okay. This is not trivial, right? It gets a little confusing. You've got to keep all these properties in line. All right. Um, so, be careful there. Questions on any of that? All right. And then the last one here, we don't really have any examples for. It's just a square. Okay, a square is a quadrilateral with four sides congruent and four right angles. In other words, a square is what kind of quadrilateral? A okay, it's equilateral and equiangular, so therefore it's really regular. Just a regular kind of guy. All right, or gal. It's a square. Who knows? Okay. So anyway, um, square. The properties. Well, a square is a parallelogram, so it inherits all the properties of a parallelogram. A square is also a rhombus and a rectangle, so it inherits all those properties too. So, for a square, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, diagonals bisect each other, diagonals are congruent, diagonals meet at a right angle, diagonals bisect opposite angles. Okay, everything. Everything that we just talked about, all the properties a square has it. Because it is a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus simultaneously. Okay? If you kind of want to get a big idea here about kind of a summary of all these things, this is a nice Venn diagram here, okay, to describe um, the organization of this, right? We have the quadrilaterals, <laughs> which is inside of a quadrilateral itself. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. Um, and then within that is the parallelogram. So that means we have quadrilaterals that are not parallelograms floating out in here, right? Um, parallelogram, and then inside of that, we have an oval of rectangles and rhombuses, and where they overlap, that's where the squares are. Rectangles, where, where something is both a rectangle and a rhombus together, it's a square. Okay? And since these all are contained within the parallelograms, then these three things are all parallelograms. Okay? So a little bit of organization there. Maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not. All right, I'll give you an assignment for this section in just a moment. We're going to quickly go through the next section, okay, which is 9-4. Um, you can actually turn to page 460, four, nope, 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 461. 461. Okay, so now we're going to work kind of backwards, okay, in the previous section. If we had a rectangle, then we had these properties that were true. If we had a rhombus, then we had these properties that were true. If we had a square, then these properties were true. Now we're saying, here's a shape with these properties. Is it a rectangle? Is it a rhombus? Is it a square? Is it even a parallelogram? Those are the things we want to be able to answer. Okay? So, what are sufficient conditions for something to be a rectangle? Well, if one angle of a parallelogram is a right angle, then 
the parallelogram is a rectangle. So if you have a parallelogram here and you see one right angle, that means all the rest of them are going to have to be right angles based off those co-interior angles and stuff like that. Okay. Likewise, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. So if you have a parallelogram and you know the diagonals are congruent, guaranteed that thing is a rectangle. Okay. You'll notice for both of these conditions, it requires that you already have established the shape as a parallelogram first, then with these additions, you can say the shape is more specifically a rectangle. Okay. So we have to first establish its parallelogram. We already talked about how to do that yesterday. For those of you that weren't absent, if opposite sides are congruent, or if opposite angles are congruent, or if diagonals bisect each other, you're guaranteed to have a parallelogram. And then from that, additionally, if one of your angles is a right angle, rectangle. Or if one, um, if your diagonals are congruent in addition to being bisect, in addition to bisecting each other, then it's also a rectangle. Okay. So those are your conditions right there. So let's see here. Did I want to? Yeah. Let's talk about these these right here. Okay, because this is what we want to be able to do. So we've got this shape. All we're told about this shape is that it's a quadrilateral. That's it. Four-sided shape. Nothing more specific than that. For number four, we're given additional information. We're told that EF is congruent to GF. Okay. We're told that FG, which is this side, we'll just leave that tick mark, is congruent to HE, that side. And we're told that FH is congruent to GE. So these diagonals bisect. No, sorry, they don't bisect, they are congruent. Okay. Is this thing necessarily a rectangle? So let's just, first of all, can we even establish if this thing is a parallelogram first? Are opposite sides congruent? We have one pair, but we don't have this pair. So is that enough? Nope. Are opposite angles congruent? Can't really tell, right? Not really sure. I mean, they look like it, but do we have information that can guarantee it? No. Nope. Do the diagonals bisect? It looks like it, but what are we told? All we're told is that the lengths of the diagonals are the same. Is that the same thing as saying the diagonals must bisect? No, it's not. So, so the answer here is... Is it necessarily a rectangle? No. No. Okay. It's not necessarily a parallelogram. So it mustn't be a rectangle. Could it be a parallelogram? Sure. Could it be a rectangle? Maybe. Okay. But it's asking if it must be necessarily a rectangle. So it's not enough information. All right. And certainly if something's not a parallelogram, then it cannot be a rectangle. Okay. All right, number five. All we're told for this now is that FEG, FEG, this angle right here, is 45 degrees. And we're told that GEH, GEH, this angle right here is 50 degrees. Can we, must this shape now, again, ignore all the tick marks because this is just a new scenario now, with just those two angle measures, can we say that this shape is a rectangle? No. Okay, in fact, we know it cannot, right? Read, why not? Oh, because um, four 90 degree angles. And what's, what do we have here? We got a 95, okay? So yeah, 45 plus 50 equals 95. This shape cannot be a rectangle for sure. Like we can like definitely say it. Here, yeah, maybe. Not quite enough information yet. But here, for sure, not a rectangle. Okay. See, this gets a little nebulous, right? Like this is like a little bit different. You know, we're often, we're used to in math being able to say, the answer is this, okay? But here, sometimes our analysis leads to inconclusive. Number five, conclusively, not a rectangle. All right, moving on. Rhombuses, all right? You'll notice again, parallelogram, parallelogram, parallelogram. So again, to show that something's a rhombus, you kind of have first to establish that it's a, rec a, a parallelogram first, and then you can add on to see if it's a rhombus. So if you have a parallelogram and one pair of consecutive sides are congruent, 
then the parallelogram is a rhombus. So one pair of consecutive sides like this and this, right? They're next to each other, consecutive, in order, okay? That would create a rhombus because opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal, right? So this is equal to this, but they're also equal to this and this too. That would create a rhombus. If the diagonals of a parallelogram are perpendicular, so if, if they have all the properties of a parallelogram and they're also perpendicular diagonals, guaranteed to be a rhombus. And then finally here, if one diagonal of a parallelogram bisects a pair of opposite angles, so all you need is one diagonal to bisect a pair of opposite angles, that guarantees the thing to be a rhombus. Okay. So that's that. Let me see. Did I... Oh, there it is. All right. We're not going to prove these things, okay? So the next two things we'd like to prove that. We're not going to do that. It's too much. Too, too much. Okay? And the very last thing here, we talk about squares. Okay? And how do you show that something is a square? Well, if you show that it's both a rectangle and a rhombus, then you're guaranteed that that thing is a square. Okay? Or you could also do the definition of a square. If you show that all the angles are equal and all the sides are equal, you can do say it's a square as well. Okay? And I think that is it that I need to worry about there with you guys. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I've got for you here. Okay. So this, this second section is a little bit trickier because you have a lot of shapes now to consider. Okay. And a lot of properties to consider as well. So not trivial, but I want to give you the opportunity now to get started on it. So that way you can have plenty of time to ask questions. Oh, it's, it's right here. There it is in blue. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on that. If you finish this, you want to get started on your 10 marks, I'll be happy to help you with that too. Okay. Please use your time wisely. Okay. What? What am I saying weird? Yes, you may. Yes. <coughs> Yes. Yes. I have a party in the bathroom. <laughs>